Sickle cell anemia is a blood disease that affects 1 in 5,000 in the United States, mostly affecting Americans of sub-Saharan African descent, according to the National Institute of Health. In the United States, about 1 in 500 black births have sickle cell anemia. As a child, my arms and legs used to swell up. My mother could not hold me, uh, rock me in her arms as most parents would do with their children. And I would cry a lot. I had very high temperatures or fevers. I just was a child that seemed to be annoyed all the time and couldn't be held or anything. Growing up, uh, I just had a great deal of pain. Didn't actually realize where it came from. I just couldn't um, do normal activities as children did, play outside and play ball with my brothers and sisters and things like that. I was basically in the house all the time. Sickle cell anemia is an inherited blood disorder. Uh, patients are born with um, two abnormal genes that usually lead to sickle cell disease. Sickle cell is a disease of red blood cells. Red blood cells are what make your blood red and there are these little cells that float around and carry oxygen so that we can think and our heart can beat and we can do everything that we do. In people with sickle cell, the normal shape of these red blood cells, which are kind of like frisbee shaped, actually end up looking like a crescent moon or like a sickle. And blood doesn't flow very easily when it's shaped like a sickle. It goes much better when it's shaped like a frisbee. And these abnormal blood cells live a very short period of time. They're dying much more quickly than the normal red blood cells in the body. And this causes anemia, which makes people tired and weak. So that part of your body that is having the um, sickling or amount of sickling um, is, is pretty much losing oxygen and it causes excruciating pain. Some additional complications of sickle cell disease can include failure of our kidneys, damage to our brain, failure of our lungs, damage to our bones and muscles. This is because the sickle-shaped cells can block the small blood vessels that supply oxygen to these organs. The way I dealt with sickle cell as a child, um, I had plenty of blood transfusions. They helped a lot. I had hospitalizations maybe two or three times a year. I just continued to go back and forth to the doctor and take my medication. My mother was very careful about the medication she allowed them to give me at that time. I was on folic acid. Um, I used to get blood transfusions when I needed them and um, she would not allow them to give me anything stronger than uh, Tylenol with codeine until I was about 16. I was always on um, pain medication. I don't know exactly what I took at the time, but my mother would just give me something to relax the pain and it would just put me to sleep and it would either make me better or I got worse. But my mother took care of me at home until I was 18 and the medication couldn't uh, control it anymore. During the time I attended Fairleigh, Dick Fairleigh Dickinson University, I would come home once a month to receive blood transfusions. The blood transfusions were to keep my hemoglobin up and to keep me out of the hospital because at that time I would get sick at least twice a month. I thought what could we do after he got out of college that would keep him from getting sick. So there was a mis medication that was in the works uh, in experimental mode and that was the hydroxyurea. As hematologists, we're frequently asked whether or not hydroxyurea is the best drug that we have available to treat our patients. The truth is, it's really the only drug we have available to treat our patients, which is what makes it the best choice. The drug has been around for many years and was previously used to treat patients with leukemia. In terms of treatment for patients with sickle cell anemia, the drug has been around since the 1990s. And what hydroxyurea does is it actually makes your body start producing the healthy blood cells that you had when you were inside of your mother. With that healthy blood, there's much less sickling that goes on in your body and you end up getting transfused less, you end up getting much less pain as well. I can say that hydroxyurea has improved my life. Um, I've gotten less pain crises. Um, I don't really um, have to go into the hospital as much. My life before hydroxyurea, as before, mentioned before, I had lots of crises in the hospital two to three times a year, and then it came to the point where I was there like once every month. 
and also other issues with the with sickle cell, you know, having more abdominal issues. I had started getting leg ulcers and things like that. But after hydroxyurea, it took a while for it to start working, maybe about two years. And then after that two years, just all of a sudden, I wasn't having major crisis anymore. Um, before I started taking hydroxyurea, I was a regular patient at this hospital. When I say regular patient, I mean, I was in this hospital so much that every nurse knew me, every doctor knew me. They knew me from my childhood on up to me being a 39-year-old man right now. Upon my starting to take the hydroxyurea, my hospitalizations began to decrease. Uh, slowly at first, but then exponentially. I don't think I've had a crisis now in the past three to six years. Uh, the safety in uh, youngsters and children has been shown and um, has been used for the last 10 years in children as young as uh, six years of age. Uh, some bigger centers are using it as, as young as two years of age. The, the reason that hydroxyurea is being used very early is one is to reduce the number of uh, crises in, uh, in youngsters, but the other one which is more important is really to uh, prevent some of the long-term organ damages that can, uh, one can see with uh, sickle cell anemia, especially uh, damages that can happen in the lungs. And there is more evidence that it may even help some of the damages that can happen in the brain. It is an extremely rare side effect in patients with sickle cell disease, but our patients have reported that sometimes their hair feels brittle to them and can thin out. So we monitor this. Again, a minor side effect, and if you stop the medication, the hair will grow back to normal, and you can restart the medication again without um, losing a lot of hair. I have an aunt. Actually, I have three aunts that are, are in nurses, and one of them just hounded me for years when it, hydroxyurea first came out to take it, and I just kept refusing because I was afraid of the side effects, especially where they said it may cause cancer. There have been rare reported cases of cancer in individuals with sickle cell disease taking hydroxyurea, but it is no more common than the general population. That is, patients with sickle cell disease or patients without sickle cell disease can have cancer at very low incidences, and when you're taking hydroxyurea, there does not appear to be any increase in cancer above the general population. So at this time, we do not recommend using hydroxyurea when you're pregnant. The other thing that we usually avoid is the use of hydroxyurea when you're breastfeeding. So during those time periods, we would request that hydroxyurea be discontinued, and then it could be resumed again at a later time. I became a mother, a wife, and dealing with everyday stresses, I had started having more crisis frequently. It was to the point I was having them maybe like every month. I was being in the hospital every month. So I was missing out time with my new baby, and something had to be done, so I just said to heck with it and decided to try it, and thank God I did, and it has changed my life. I just think that if you can do anything to improve your life, you know, you get one life to live, and I think you should do everything you can to improve it and do the best you can with what, for me, with what God is giving you while you're here. And for me, God has given me hydroxyurea.